This is CES M M A. O'Neill has the experience. He is also one year of the elder. Has the height, both are equal in weight. One inch reach advantage in the arms for Chuck O'Neill. Three inches longer in the legs. This fight is scheduled for five rounds in the welterweight division. It is a CES MMA title fight. Introducing first, the challenger. Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks, weighing in at 171 pounds, with a pro record of seven wins, one loss and one draw, with one win coming by way of knockout and one by way of submission. He's fighting out of all-star BJJ, an active sergeant in the U.S. Army. Hailing from Jersey City, New Jersey, ladies and gentlemen, Emmanuel Manny Wallow! And the champion, fighting out of the red corner. Wearing the blue trunks with the orange trim. Weighing in at 171 pounds with a pro record of 14 wins. Six losses with four wins coming by way of knockout in six by submission. Fighting out of Mass BJJ, an ultimate fighter alum, hailing from East Bridgewater, Mass. Ladies and gentlemen, Chuck Cold Steel O'Neill. Your referee is Kevin McDonald. Fighters to the center, please. All right, guys, this is five rounds under the unified rules of mixed martial arts. We're going over those rules in the back. Do I have any questions blue? Any questions red? If not, touch gloves, come out swinging. It is main event time for the Weltweight Championship of CES. With the closing odds, thanks to Nick Kalikas, have Chuck O'Neill the favorite at minus 320. The comeback on Emmanuel Wallo at plus 240. Michael Chevallo, Pat Miletic with you live on Access TV from the Twin River Casino in Rhode Island. Thumping right hands to open up here for... Oh. Oh. oh! Good night, Irene! Just like that! O'Neill knocks out Wala. You mentioned the right hand earlier in the broadcast. Yeah. Was it quickest knockout of the night? Was it quicker than the three-second knockout we saw by Piver over Doherty earlier on tonight? That was stunning. That was stunning. Let's and see that real time. And championship match. Yeah, let's see that real time. Flush. Look at his legs lock out. Night night. Oh. Short circuited the nerves there, man. Could have had his ring banner and put it on him like a like a blanket. <laughs> wow. Okay, let's go to uh, Adam Palancia to make it all official. Ladies and gentlemen, you're winner by knockout with 11 seconds in round number one and still champion, Chuck Cold Steel. Take yourselves of all time. Do you have any questions? 
No, touch gloves. Good luck to both of you. Good luck. One of the best in the game, Dan Miragliotta, third man in the cage. And this one should be an absolute cracker to kick off CES number 31. Between ribs, Greg Rebello and the big crazy moose, Mike Musatelli. Rebello with crazy knockout power. 10 knockouts in 18 wins. Musa Telly, more of a submission specialist. Five subs in seven wins. That's what made me wonder when Musa Telly told me he told us that he was going to stand up and strike with Rebello the entire time. Uh, I think as soon as they start exchanging, Musa Telly's probably going to be shooting for takedowns. Rebello lays him with a heavy artillery. He comes in as a favorite at minus 215. Come back on the Musa plus 165. Pinching Rebello up against the cage here. Six fights on tonight's card, including that main event for the vacant welterweight championship of the world. Kill Freitas takes on Chip Marazapola. Good to see this cruiserweight division kicking off CES 31. Division's been needed for a long time in the sport. Southpaw stance on Greg Rebello. He's in the green and black. Punt kick there from Musa Telly. Rebello talking to him after that front kick missed. Rebello said he worked a lot in his jiu-jitsu defense in preparation for this one. If it does go to ground, look out for Musa Telly to try and lock on the triangle choke. He's his favorite grappling technique. The Moose had a 12-week camp in prep for this fight. Speaking of submissions, Moose Tully actually holds the second fastest submission in Bellator history. Early groin strike befalling Craig Rebello. The sadist in the truck will show us again. Balls of the feet hit the other sort of balls, Pat. Yes, it did. We heard it. Rebello just shakes the old smalls back into place, and we're ready to get underway. Still here in the first round. You know that Rebello would love to back Musatelli against the cage and pound on him with those hands. Rebello trying to figure out his distancing. The man engaging here, plenty of movement, not a lot of action. Just wondering if Rebello's plan is to counter punch and Musatelli not punching makes it tough to do. Got to watch that reach of Musatelli, the height that he has over Rebello. Rebello a little more tentative than we've seen him in his last couple of fights. To the inside fire of Musatelli, Musatelli jabbing. Bello circling clockwise here, drifting off to his left into that right hand of Musatelli, showing no respect for it. Tries to hook the moose over the top. Musatelli with a left hook of his own. Certainly not a barn burner here in the first, but it only takes a minuscule opening for a guy like Rebello to turn it into a slugfest. Minus 215, the closing odds for Rebello, plus 165, the comeback on Musatelli, thanks to Nick Kalikas at Fight Odds on Twitter. There's the overhand left, it's good night, Irene, just like that, Ribs Rebello does it again. Told you, that's how Ribs knocks people out. One punch from Greg Ribs Rebello. It was just figuring out the timing. The man who lists Mark Hunt as his hero gives a Mark Hunt style knockout. One for the highlight reel. Watch the timing here. Boop. Fakes low, changes levels, comes back over the top with it. 
Musatelli goes down in a heap. First round knockout, 11 knockouts now on the record of Greg Rabello. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner, 324 in round number one by knockout, Greg Rims Rabello. This is CES M M A. Here is our Sidgwick Chiropractic Center's tail to tape. Three rounds in the featherweight division. Dennis Piva comes in at four and five, a one knockout, fighting out of East Providence, Rhode Island. He takes on the veteran Joe Cushman, 11 and five, with three knockouts, fighting out of Bridgewater, Mass. Let's send it down to Adam Palazzo for the official introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Situate Chiropractor Center bout of the evening. This fight is scheduled for three rounds in the featherweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, weighing in at 135 pounds, with a professional record of 11 wins, five losses, three wins coming by way of knockout, hailing from Bridgewater, Massachusetts. Ladies and gentlemen, Joe Cushman! And fighting out of the red corner, weighing in at 135 pounds, fighting in his 10th professional fight, hailing from Providence, Rhode Island, ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Sweetbread Paiva! The referee is Kevin McDonald. Mike Parenti, Scott Ream joining you cage side from CES MMA 24 Live from Twin Anchor Casino. Wow, Sweetbread connects right off the bat, the short little combination. Oh, there's a straight left by Paul. Wow, he's right on him. Piva catches Cushman with the left hand, drops Cushman right on his backside. Now this is where Cush is very dangerous. He's got an excellent, excellent ground game, but then he's not letting him breathe at the moment. Looks like some blood coming from that lip of Joe Cushman, most likely courtesy of that left from Dennis Paiva. Great action here to start off this featherweight bout. Paiva now upstairs with a head kick. Big oh, right hand, Cushman's right. out. Whoa! What a win for Dennis Paiva. He knocks Cushman cold, and easily the biggest win of Dennis Paiva's career in his 10th bout here at Twin River Casino. What a finish. That is the best Dennis Paiva we've seen. No question about it, that's as sharp as he's looked in any fight we've ever seen. We've seen a lot of Dennis Paiva through the years just knocking out Joe Cushman, overwhelming him from the start. The left hand early on didn't finish him, but the right hand certainly did. What a way to celebrate your 10th bout, your 10th anniversary. Dennis Paiva does it in stunning fashion. We barely had time to even settle down here before this fight ended. And I'll tell you what, Dennis came out of the gate hot. Yes, he did. Dennis Piva mentioned before this bout how he has switched up his training camps, working with CCFA, the Cape Cod Fighting Alliance, left behind Matt Santos, who he began his career with, always stuck around with Keith Allen, his manager, and he even said himself this was the best he felt coming into a fight, and it certainly showed here in the cage tonight. What a win. Joe Cushman still reeling, trying to make it back to his feet. Here's the replay, Scott. We're going to see how this all went down. You there say it is. it's a short clipping right hand, right hook, but it was two straight follow-ups, a straight right and a hammer fist. But that's not, that's the end of the fight. You're going to see earlier in the beginning, there's your clip that drops him moving in, two more strikes. But it was earlier, he was rocked earlier. Cush got knocked around earlier and, and recovered pretty well, but I, I don't think he was 100%. Dennis kept his composure, kept the pressure, and really, that was a pinpoint right hook. We mentioned during the intro, Scott, that Dennis Piva certainly had his share of up and downs in MMA, lost the fight by disqualification. He's had some tough losses on his resume. 
could very easily have been five and four coming in tonight instead of four and five. But now he's five and five, and it really puts he's him in perspective. Five and five with a win over Joe Cushman, who's 11 and five. Huge step up. Mikey, yeah. like we said, you were just saying, coming through on the way, on the walk-in, what Dennis Pye was going to show up. He's always had the potential. He's always had the skill set. Maybe he found a home. Maybe he found the right camp and the right people around him. Maybe every peg fell into place. That, I want to see more of that. You're right, Scott. When it all comes together, that's how it looks in the cage. Let's send it down to Adam Palacio for the particulars. Well, ladies and gentlemen, your winner with 49 seconds in round number one by knockout, Dennis Sweetbread Haima! Connecticut and taking on Charles Cheeks the third, 14 and seven, six of his wins coming by submission. He also weighed in at 146 and represents Houston, Texas. Let's send it up to Adam Palacio for the introduction. This event is sanctioned by the Rhode Island Department of Business Regulation, Division of Gaming and Athletics Licensing. Elizabeth Tanner, Director. Pamela Toro, Associate Director. Christina Tobias, Gaming and Athletics Administrator. Peter Timothy, Gaming and Athletics Licensing. Your referees tonight have been John English and Brian Miner. Judges, Alan Lau, Nick Mamouth, Paul Asmir, and Joseph Feldman. And your physicians, Cage Side, are Dr. Peter de Blasio and Assistant Michael Ray. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your main event. Five five-minute rounds for the vacant featherweight world title brought to you tonight by Timeless CBD. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks, he weighed in at 146 pounds. His pro record, 14 wins, seven losses, with six big victories coming by way of submission. Tonight, he fights in his fourth pro title fight, hailing from Houston, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, Charles, Mr. Cheeks, the third. And his opponent, fight out of the red corner, Wearing the pink trunks, his pro record, 23 wins, nine losses, with seven big victories by knockout, and another eight by submission. This is his seventh pro title fight. He is an alum of the UFC and a former CES world champion. Hailing from Stafford Springs, Connecticut, Ladies and gentlemen, Matt the Mangler Bissett. Your referee is Mr. John English. All right, gentlemen, when you get the rules early this evening, any questions? Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands, and fight within the rule set. Touch him now if you want. Let's do it. We're just about ready to get underway with our main event. Five rounds for the CES MMA featherweight title, which is currently vacant. Matt Bissett in the pink trunks, taking on Charles Cheeks the third in the black. And once again, we are cage side at Twin River Casino Hotel, live on UFC Fight Pass. Round number one underway. Bissett looking to capture the title for the second time. He won it back in 2016, vacated after getting the call up to the UFC, and now back in the CES MMA cage for the second time since his stint with the UFC. First one was back in Hartford in his hometown. A hard-earned win over Tim Dooling. Tom, you remember that fight? Yeah, action-packed, back and forth, awesome battle. And we later saw a dueling against Dennis Paiva in the same cage here at Twin River, who put on another great performance. So that was a tough fight for uh, for Matt. And this one, I think we expect more of the same from Charles che Cheeks the Third, who a guy who really just knows how to grind it out, Joe. Yeah, I think this is really a case of speed versus power. I said it before, you know, I think Matt Bissett generally he likes to just touch, 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 hit people with a lot of shots and kind of overwhelm them. Whereas I think uh, Mr. Cheeks generally tries to throw some bigger punches and then take people down and beat them up on the ground and really grind them up. This, this one, yeah, the takedown there by Cheeks off the body lock. 
This one's scheduled for five rounds, and don't forget later on we have our D'Amico and Birchfield Performance of the Night Award that we'll be announcing after the completion of the final bout, so stay tuned for that as well. Oof. Charles, she's going for this head and arm. Yeah. Right off the bat here is an interesting position how he caught it as Bissett tried to roll. Bissett once again trying to defend. It looks like he may be able to turn and get on top here if he can elevate that left hook off of his hips. Matt Bissett's in black belt jiu-jitsu. Probably will as well. Charles Sheets didn't seem overly impressed by that. Said his ground game is on point. Trains at Gracie Baja in Houston with uh, Team Dracolino. He's very confident in his ground skills. He said he was recently given a purple belt. Yep. He said. Here he has a far side underhook. Although Matt Bissett's on top, and now he's gained control of that far side underhook, which will keep Sheets down on his back. Sheets coming up on that single leg. Bissett defending with the seat belt grip, trying to work his way around the back. And now he's looking to trap that near side arm, perhaps baiting Cheeks into taking a single leg on that to get out so he can trap it and look for the submission. You can hear, you can hear the corner yelling at him to trap the arm. So, looks to be a, a signature move or something Bissett's worked on. Interesting back and forth here early on in the opening round of our five round featherweight title bout. Matt Bissett in the pink, Charles Cheeks in the black trunks. Heads to try and scrape Bissett off of his back. Uh -huh, yep. Well, if nothing else, it moved Bissett off of his back. Yes. You know. Both fighters coming out of the clinch, back to the center. Bissett letting his hands go a bit. 154 to go in round one. Oh, good kick. Cheeks relatively stationary there as they're striking, not really moving forward or backwards as he strikes, but rather planting his feet and throwing. Nice overhand right followed by the left by Cheeks to press Bissett against the cage. Yeah, Bissett looked like he was waiting there, like waiting to counter and then just didn't find the opportunity he was looking for. And now Cheeks is back inside again. I feel like sometimes Bissett tries to be like the prettier striker, whereas Cheek seems to try to be the heavier striker. There's a lot of clinch fighting going on, a lot of intricacies. Both guys fighting for underhooks, pushing off on the face. We're four minutes in, and while there hasn't been a ton of damage, it's been nonstop action the right. entire time. And a lot of back and forth from the opening bell, and we still have a minute to go here. Nice knee as Bissett controlled the clinch there through a left knee up the middle with the land. You're seeing an array of technique here in this opening round. It's been a great pace. Bissett just missed that short left elbow. Both guys fanning. Bissett sneaking that rear uppercut underneath the left arm of Cheeks as he planted. Bissett eats a right hand. Here comes Cheeks now back on top. Bissett went for the kick to the midsection and Cheeks countered with the overhand right, a wide looping shot. Cheeks hasn't taken one step back yet. No. There's first round, he's been moving forward. Well, he's eaten a few shots. I mean, he's imposed his will here towards the end of the round. Yeah, the second for all the plata, yeah. All time. Impressive first round for both sides. I thought Charles Cheeks did a nice job, really showing poise. First time fighting on the East Coast, he's fighting in Bassett's territory, under the bright lights, UFC fight pass, world title, all those things. And it looks like Tom so far he's processed pretty well. Yeah, it's another very close round. We saw a lot of close rounds with Lopez and Shut earlier in the grappling department. And now once again, we have a fight that plays out primarily in the clinch, primarily grappling, and a lot of back and forth action. Uh, I guess if I had to choose, I'd give that round of cheeks, I guess. It was a tough round to score. I mean, it was kind of back and forth. You say, you know, Bissett had a little bit more control. Cheeks landed some bigger punches. There was a lot of back and forth. You take a look back at some of the action here in this opening round. Just a technique, yeah. really, by both sides. Bissett kind of did that part to himself. I think he tried to roll through, and Cheeks just landed well. I think he tried to Gramby roll or, you know, do a forward roll there. Is probably going to be the... 
the second line did a really nice, nice flush kick at one point, too. All right, here is round number two in our featherweight world title bout, your main event of CES MMA 60. Michael Parenti joined by Filthy Tom Lawler and Joe Lozon. Flying knee by Bissett just graces his cheek, no pun intended, and now Cheeks gets the takedown. Bissett's got butterfly guard here with at least one hook. He's trying to work that right leg in now. Sen loves to attack leg locks from bottom here too. Likes to elevate people and attack the legs. Stack on the hooks. Yeah, we'll see if Cheeks stays on the ground or if he tries to stand up and pass. If he tries to stand and pass, that may give Bissett a chance to go for the leg. Although, keeping his head down here is allowing him to lock up a, a form of rubber guard. And I talked about the multifaceted attack of Bissett earlier. Punches, kicks, strikes, submissions. But we're seeing, you know, a multifaceted attack on the ground as well. He's going for the omoplata. He goes for the rubber guard. And now he's attacking that leg. So the upper body and lower body have to be on the defensive if you're Charles Cheeks. He's got that inside heel hook attempt. He's trying to isolate that left leg. If he can get the heel of Cheeks in between his left armpit and his left elbow. He can look to torque the knee, possibly try to tear the ACL and all the ligaments in the leg. But he needs to watch out for punches once he commits to that leg. We've seen it in the past, actually, to Tony Gravely. Right. Uh, title defense. I believe that was against Chris Moutinho, yep. if I'm not correct, right? Moutinho went for the leg lock, Gravely punched him out, so. Bassett has to be careful here if he commits both hands, and he's committing both hands to that leg lock, but Cheeks is on his side, not in a great position to necessarily land strikes, but it looks like he's defending that leg. It is very similar to the Gravely Matino fight that you referenced. We'll see if Cheeks can actually get up and land. He's trying to poke with that left hand. And now it dissolves, at least momentarily. 2.44 to go in round number two. If Bissett can get Cheeks to belly down as well, when Bissett goes to belly down, that's going to be his best opportunity. That's going to leave Cheeks face down in the mat, unable to punch. And you can see he's trying to work to that position now. If he tries to finish this leg lock while they're both on their backs, it's going to give Cheeks a chance to strike. So he's trying to turn over to his belly. Might have there it is. Yeah. Leg locks are really difficult to make sometimes because as soon as you commit both your hands to the one leg, you're going to get punched in the face, you get nothing for defense. A lot of guys will they'll use the legs to attack to a sweep and get on top, and then they'll bail on it. But Bissette's choosing to try and really finish it out here. Then it more or less becomes a race to the finish line to some degree. It does. Yeah, you, if you're Bissette really to control this position, and well, he's, he's switching outside to that outside heel hook now. Oh, and che Cheeks is out. You want to control the far side leg so that you have control of both hips so that your opponent's not able to get out like Cheeks did there. Cheeks does escape, but Bissett gets back to his feet and then presses Cheeks against the cage again. 1.37 to go in round number two. This one's scheduled for five. Press him against the cage and then press his knee right into his midsection with a nice blow there. Cheeks has certainly shown a scrappiness, but very also strong. very strong technique. Great and a technique. lot of poise as well, right. Great technique, very, very scrappy. This is kind of the, the kind of fight I expected. The fun back and forth so far in our five round featherweight title bout main event, live from Twin River Casino Hotel. Beautiful shuck the set forward there to attempt to take his back. See if he can make something happen off this position now. Set locking up that left arm, going for a Kimura. And he's really committing to that arm, although now he goes to stand up. Cheeks with a slam attempt, but Bissett just holds his ground like he's firmly yeah. planting roots into the canvas, doesn't let him really get him off his feet. Went for a standing headed arm choke there as well, but it allowed it the set to turn away from the cage. The set now, now breaks free. Oh, Cheeks landed a nice right hand, a short right, ducking under the right hand of the set. 
This is usually where Bissett has excelled, or at least what we've seen in the past in some of his more back and forth fights, but Cheeks is holding his own standing up as well. And there is the bell for round number two. Another interesting round. Uh, Bissett, I thought, showed some initiative in the ground game, Joe, and perhaps pull that out with those attempts, those submission-style attempts midway through. I think enough just to ride it out in the end. Yeah, you know, Bissett did a really good job engaging, attacking with those heel hooks, you know, but sometimes you gotta just learn to cut, cut your loss. You got, the, you got your sweep out of it, get on top, stay on top, start beating the guy up. You know, he tried to get a little greedy a little bit and stay with the leg. There's some replays from round two. That flying knee attempt got thwarted by Cheeks, who then scored the takedown. And most of the fight, or most of this round, really remained on the ground here. And, and Tom, you see, Bissett going for the, the heel hook attempt, not quite getting it. Joe made a good point. You know, he mentioned there Bissett getting greedy with that heel hook attempt. He also got greedy going for the flying knee, and that's what ended it up with him on bottom. Put him on bottom. There's that risk reward factor that we've seen in so many fights. It's what we love about a Mangler fight, though. That's he's gonna right. take chances, he's gonna go for things. The set will always take a chance, no doubt about that. Round number three about to get underway. This one's scheduled for five in the featherweight division. The vacant CES MMA world title is on the line. Both guys look just as fresh in the third round as they did in the first. Yeah, these are two veterans, you know, used to fighting the five round fight. Great cardio, they're in shape. Doesn't appear to be a difficult weight cut for either guy coming in fresh, like you said. And it really kind of gives you confidence that if this does go to four or five, they're going to be as effective as they were when the opening bell rang. Nice attempt upstairs by Bissett. Cheeks had that one blocked. There's a, some blood over the right eye of Cheeks. It must have been from that kick, I guess. Bissette, I didn't see many yeah. strikes land prior to that. Bissett trying to, he always sneaks in that little uppercut from time to time. We saw him try it there in the exchange. Well, especially against a shorter competitor, right? Cheeks is always moving forward. So if he moves forward behind that jab, it gives Bissett a chance to sneak that rear uppercut up the middle. Although he's, he's changed his stance now, so now they're in an open stance. It's Bissett's uh, southpaw. It's tough to tell where this cut is over the right eye of Cheeks. Looks like it's right on the side in one of the far edge of the I think it might, yeah, either be on the edge or below the eye. It's hard to tell. It doesn't look like it's a factor at the moment. But it is in a spot where the blood looks to be going kind of down into the eye, which is one of the worst spots for your vision. Although he's landed some strikes now that he's inside on Bissett. Good right there by Cheeks. Bissett oh, going for this guillotine. I think Bissette's he's got, got it. That's a great guillotine. Yeah, I think he's got this. That looks tight. Bissett with a surprise guillotine attempt here. Just kind of pulled that out of the back pocket. They have caught Cheeks sleeping a bit. And a lot of time, 320. He's trying to go for the sweep there, trying to use that hook to elevate. Oh, Cheeks no, slips Cheeks out of it. Bissette's got a great guillotine. And he's looking to use this overhook on the left-hand side and the left butterfly hook with his leg to elevate Cheeks and take him take him over with a sweep. But Cheeks reads it, but Bissette, see how he has his left leg out? It's going to allow him to stand up, and there we go. Back up to his feet. A little separation here with two and a half to go. Nice shot to the Good midsection by Cheeks. And now follows up with the kick to the midsection. Beautiful. A couple more body shots there inside. Fires back with a jab that Bissette answered back with his own. Good sprawl. Yeah, Cheeks mixing it up too, throwing punches and throwing the shot in, but Bissette had it countered. Decent scrap here breaking out in round number three. Now Bissette again driving Cheeks to the cage. Just over two minutes ago in round three. Still two more scheduled for this world title bout. This is our main event live from CES MMA 60. Brought to you on UFC Fight Pass. Couple shoulder strikes there from the set. <laughs> everyone, everyone's gonna start shoulder striking everybody all the time after the Conor McGregor Cowboys are gonna fight. Short elbow there from the set. Cheeks goes upstairs and right to the midsection again. There was that short uppercut, though, from Bissette as Cheeks kind of ducked down. And you're right, Tommy. He does sort of invite himself. He walks into those uppercuts because of his height, and he comes forward a lot. So Yeah, he hasn't taken a step back. No. So you know where like his head's going to no, be. No, it doesn't look like he plans on doing it at any point in this fight either. 90 oh. seconds to go in round three. Bissette now letting his hands go a little more. Yeah, here comes the volume of Bissette starting to take over a little bit. 
He's using that left hand to frame yeah. a lot to try to throw punches. Set with a knockout victory. Third round TKO. Cheeks is out on his back. Matt Bissett picked his spot and found the opening. And Joe, he delivered a knockout blow. That's the Matt Bissett game. You know, he drags you in a deep water. He over overwhelms you. He lands a big shot. That's what he does. Did Quiet a for a moment there, guys. The Bissett just got the crowd back to its feet again. An explosive finish here to recapture the vacant featherweight belt for the second time in four years for the second time in his career. We'll take a look at the replay in a minute, but wow, what an outstanding finish. And Joe, I think you're right. He just kind of lulls you in a little bit, draws you in. He makes you think that he's sort of feeling out, and then he just unloads with that big right hand. He's not always the most technically sound as far as, like, not getting hit at all. He gets hit a little bit, but he kind of drags you in, drags you in, gets you to kind of commit, and then he peppers, peppers, and hits you with something big. Here's the replay. You see Cheeks kind of leaning in. Throws that short little kick to the midsection. And there it is. Right to the chin. That's the sweet spot, Tom. When you see that, you know it's over. Yep, right over the top of that left hand from Cheeks. Here's a better look. There so the is. left hand also set that up. He landed that short left hook. Two quick shots. So, so Matt Bissett, a man of his word, predicted he would finish this fight within three rounds. It does just that. So maybe he knew all along, Joe, what was going to happen here. He We're going to send it up. <laughs> he said he was going to do it, and he did it. And he did it. Let's send it up to Adam Palacio for the particulars. And ladies and gentlemen, your winner, four minutes and one second into round number three by KO and new world champion, Matt the Mangler, Bissette. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here with your timeless CBD recovery interview with your champion, the new, once again, CES featherweight champion of the world, Matt the Mangler Bassett. A hard fought victory. Looks like you kind of lulled him into a, a strap there and then put his lights out. Walk us through that finish, Matt. Yeah, man, honestly, if you watch my fights, that's kind of what I do. I, I lure people into my game, uh, make them feel like they're doing something, and I'm, you know, getting my breath, getting my wits about me throughout, and kind of learning what they do. A lot of times, I, I finish in the second or third, and got to finish in the third. Um, my daughter's not old enough to hear this, but I miss you so much, baby girl. These two days away felt like eternity. I love you. I miss you. Obviously, you've accomplished a goal once again, having that CES strap around your shoulder. Matt, what's next? Uh, I'm gonna give you one of those shirts. Make it dope. What is that? Those deer in the woods? That's kill you're killing it. You're killing it. Um, I don't know what's next. You know, I'm gonna go home and uh, make out with my wife and uh, play with my daughter and just enjoy life. All right, thanks for that image, Matt. Let's hear it once again for your winner, the featherweight world champion, the mangler, Matt Bassett. There it is once again, four minutes, one second into round number three. Matt Bissett, a man of his word, said he would finish this fight within three rounds and does just that. A real electrifying performance. Once again, as we talked about throughout Matt Bissett's career, he has that ability to maybe not lull you to sleep, but more or less draw you into that web, and then he strikes when you least expect it. Yeah, you know, he, he said it. He lures them in. He lures people in. He lets them hit him a little bit. He just tries to be a little bit pretty. This is CES.